Hey everybody, it's, I said Wednesday, it's Tuesday, August 27th, and you're here at the weekly community call for chaos. I'm Elizabeth, I'm the community manager. It's really great to see everybody here. Um, thank you for showing up. As you know, this is part of the chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us today here in the meeting. You do not have to keep your cameras on, obviously, or not obviously, you can keep them off. We don't care. It's all good either way. We just want you to be happy. If you would like to add your name here to the agenda, oh, I didn't add mine, and tell us what instrument you would like to play. That's something you do not play already. I should have made that disclaimer. Um, I'm just curious. I've always wanted to play the drums, but I don't have good rhythm to do that. So I think that's maybe a necessity. I don't know. Maybe not. Now that I'm a grown up and I have my own house, I can do that, right? Like I can just get a set and put them in the basement. Who cares? Do it. Get a I snare. Just start with one. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to try it. I'm really not, but I would like to. Um, okay, let's jump into it. If you do need the minutes, just don't hesitate to ask. Somebody will drop them in chat for you. No problem at all. I'm looking for Georg and he's not here. So we're going to wish him a happy birthday anyway. He's probably out partying. I'm just kidding. I don't think he is, but maybe he is. I don't know. Happy birthday, Georg, wherever you may be. I think it is an all day celebration, actually. Good. Uh, that's the way it should be. It starts it right about now and it ends. I'm going to go this evening. So, <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. That's the way it should be. So, happy birthday to you, Georg, wherever you are. I hope you have a great day. Um, next thing on the agenda is the just want to let everybody know in case you missed this information. The um, data science working group has changed days and times. It's now Tuesdays at 10 a.m. U.S. Central, right before this meeting. So you can just come to that meeting every other week and then stick around for this meeting. And as uh, Don, I'll let you say a couple words just to re, you know, reaffirm that you do not need to be a data scientist to be at this meeting. Yes, absolutely. So the, the data science working group meeting is really for anybody who's interested in analyzing data. So we talk about we talk about challenges with with looking at data, cleaning data. We look we're kind of working on some projects right now. There's some people working on event location inclusivity, um, that metric. Um, I've been working on relicensing and forks and data around those. So, so seriously, you don't have to know any artificial intelligence. You don't have to know any machine learning. You don't have to have any special special skills. You just have to have an interest in, in data to, to join us. So I would encourage more people to come join us. Are there things that are gonna be produced from that work? Like is the intention to have like do a presentation on what you're finding, stuff like that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, so I am working on the forks and, and relicensing bit. And so the idea behind that is um, I'll turn that into a, a paper presentation at conferences, things like that. So we'll share we'll share what we learn out of that particular project. I think the in, and the event location inclusivity, I think the idea is to um, publish some resources for people around that. So that's something that I don't know, Elizabeth, if you want to add any anything else on that bit. Yeah, so that's a project that Chan, Sophia, and I are working on, and we haven't landed exactly on what it is that we want to produce. I think our preliminary research was going to help us inform what's needed and what people want. Um, it is kind of leaning toward a centralized location for data that's aggregated for, for um, event organizers to use because they're all doing their own research and they're all you know, looking up the same information. So to have that in one place would be super helpful. I don't know if we're the people to do that, quite honestly, I don't know if that's on us. Um, but I think that that's something that Sophia and Chan and I need to sort out is exactly where we wanna take, because we've just finished the preliminary data with some, some interviews of folks. So we, we need to meet and figure out where we wanna take it. If it is just presenting, here's what we found, somebody take this and run with it. If it's getting more data, are we're doing more surveys from a larger pool of folks. Um, we're not sure yet. So there you go. That answer your question, Matt? Yeah, it does. I, I'm thinking like how to do uh, like kind of lightweight things that would come out of this and like presentations. I know that they require submissions and all that kind of stuff, but um, 
just ways to kind of let people know uh, like the outcomes of this work and how like chaos metrics or chaos tools or chaos thinking helped kind of inform, for example, your, your thinking about forks, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're the other thing that we're doing um, in some cases is trying to publish some of the some of the data sets and some of the findings in the um, data science working group repository. So I think that's that's um, also part of it. And then I also think that we could do some blog posts and things around um, some of what we learned on the, the chaos blog. I think there, there might be a lot of value too in documenting or publishing the processes by which you were able to get these outcomes mm -hmm. with the chaos metrics and tools and programs and all that kind of stuff there is sometimes a struggle of like how do you get through this how do you take all of these things that we have and all the thinking that we've done over the years and kind of draw them together in a meaningful way mm -hmm. and i think that process would help people as well yeah that's really good feedback we'll We'll think about that a bit more and see what we can see what we can come up with. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Any other questions for Dawn? Comments? Conversation about data science stuff? Okay. I guess we can move on. Everybody should come. Um, okay, so this was a, uh, an item on the agenda from last time. Uh, I think Matt wanted to just talk about the Moodle cloud. I think it, I think it was resolved oh. either in the last meeting. <laughs> so the answer is yes, we're going to continue to host it. Okay, <laughs> fair but enough. Unless I imagined the yes, but it's somewhere. So at some point there was a yes. This is somebody uh, was using it. I think it might have yeah. been Chaos Africa. I think it's that's where the education stuff yes, has exactly. to go. Okay, so as long as that's still, yeah. I don't and it just, it just got auto renewed anyway. So oh, okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a moot point. That's always, <laughs> that's always the time where you just, you know, reevaluate. It. It, it was the email that said this is about ready to be auto renewed in a week. And so I put it on the agenda and I don't know, it's been auto renewed. So <laughs> done. <laughs> well, we're going to use it whether we want it or not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, thank you. Hopefully it's not super expensive or it's not. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and go on. I put this in here last time. So uh, for those who are new to the community, you may not have had a chance to participate in a, a broad community survey that we did a few years ago. Um, just wanted to bring it back up again. I feel like maybe it's time to do another. Um, maybe with the same questions, maybe see how we have evolved. Uh, maybe there are things that we're doing better. Maybe there are things that, that we're doing worse because we are a whole lot bigger than we were when we did this a few years ago. So I wanted to bring it to the community, see what you all thought. If, if it's worthwhile, um, I will be happy to spearhead that. If, it's, if you think that it's not worthwhile, then that's also valid. <laughs> it won't make us do it. Um, what, what are our thoughts on this? A couple couple questions like one how long would it take do you have any thoughts on like deploying it and collecting the data time frame on that so if we if we use the same structure yeah. that we did before to just okay. that would be good to compare apples to apples i think yep. um it would not take long at all because it's okay. already set up and we have all of that stuff saved um we just need to reinstate it and maybe make sure tweak it you know test it make sure it still works okay I, I guess we would set it up as a whole new instance, though. Yeah, for sure. So um, it would maybe it wouldn't take very long because it's okay. already all the hard work is done, which the hard work. not I shouldn't say that all of the pre work is done. And that took us a long time to build those questions out. So um, that part's done. The okay. data analysis. Um, I don't I don't know. And maybe that's actually something that I don't know. Let's talk about that for a second. Is that something we would want the data science group to help with? Someone in the data science group, like it, it's going to be, um, you know, potentially sensitive information in this community survey. So I want to maybe limit the folks who have access to that data. Um, or is that something that it should just be one person that does? What do, what do we think? What did we do last time? Was it just you? It was. I had access to it. I think John ran the 
numbers. Uh, I think Ruth was involved in that as well. Um, so it was a very small pool of people. Okay. Yeah, I would say it doesn't necessarily have to be through the data science group. I, I think we should just kind of do what we did last time, pick, you know, a couple of trustworthy people who are interested in analyzing the data, because like you said, it's not stuff you want to share broadly. Mm -hmm. Without, you know, scrubbing any PII kind of stuff. Yeah. So we do want to do it. Um, do we want to so is ruth on the call ruth was on the call ruth um yeah. it, was that something that you'd be interested in doing again yeah i i will um and also like the focus group the research focus group we have in Hills africa they've also talked about something similar i don't know if lami ever texted you um lami um and then kinsley had also done one for the design group in uh, Yes, Africa. So yes, I could be an activity of interested in and also Lamy as well, because I mean she has been trying to revive that uh, small focus group. Okay, so um let's create a very small group of folks to help analyze. And it might be too that like I take the the uh, data and clean it and scrub it yeah. and then present it to the research group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we use Lime Sophie the last time? What's that, Ruth? I think the platform we used last time was Lime Sophie. Yep, it was. Uh, you know, I'm. We could also go back and look at some of the the um, data. I, I don't remember if we asked about the survey in particular. But if anybody did take that survey and they remember if there were things with the platform in particular that were difficult to access or understand or anything like that, then just let me know. And if we have a lot of that kind of feedback, I think maybe we could look at taking it to a different platform. But as far as I know, it worked pretty well for folks. So I'm just going to plan to use that until I get a lot of pushback from people. <laughs> um, Uh, let's see here. So um, plan to use line survey again. Okay. Last time we did it in October, we announced it at OSSEU because we had done a chaos con in conjunction with that. Um, do we think that that's a reasonable time to launch it? Should we do it in September? Do we care? I found the old blog post. It was like September is when it officially became open, or at least according to the blog post. Okay. Okay, so let's maybe plan to do it around that same time if we yeah. want. Okay, cool. Uh, what other questions, comments, thoughts we have around this? Okay. Well, if you have any, and you don't want to say I'm here, you can for sure just ping me. What was the original survey? I just put it in the chat. It's a little bit funny, <laughs> just because it's got a lot of markup on it. Sophia is asking what goals of this survey? Do we have any new ones or would they be the same and what were they? Um, as far as I remember, mostly we wanted to understand um, how, A, how people were feeling in the, in the community, if they felt like they belonged, if they could find what they needed, um, those kinds of things. I think we uh, were also hoping for some opportunities for improvement um, and also maybe confirmation that some of the things we were trying were in fact working. So I think those are mostly the goals. We didn't have uh, any hard goals like from the survey we're gonna in, you know increase the community 20 percent or whatever we don't have anything like that um, it was mostly just to understand how people were feeling and if they were um, able to find what they needed in the community to correct somebody correct me if i'm wrong that's my that's my memory 
You are, and you're right. And like, I look at specific questions and there are things like, what are there things that you wish chaos was doing that is currently not happening in the project? Um, when you joined the project, what obstacles did you encounter as a newcomer? Um, so yeah, I think those are mostly the questions. It was less about like the goals that we had, say from the board or anything like that. Um, and Sophia, to your question, will we have a chance to review the questions ahead of time? If you're able to see this, um, yeah, yeah. We should, I should find a different. Okay. So look at <laughs> just because okay. there's so much markup in it. Okay, we'll we'll find that. I think I feel like we downloaded it into a PDF or something or Google Doc somewhere because yeah. we wanted to be able to share it with others who are so like what I shared was the way that you could just deploy it in Line Survey. Okay. It's just the does this talk about the questions at all i got not not accessible okay. like it's not open anymore so if you okay. just the following link any of those links okay yeah they're probably not yeah because they're not active okay we will uh find those and put them in a format that's easy to read yeah i'm pretty sure we can find those Great questions. Um, other questions? Questions about the questions? Questions about the survey? Comments? Anything? Okay. I guess we can go ahead and move on. So the next one on the agenda is Dawn's looking for feedback on the practitioner guide. Don, you want to talk about this? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have a draft of the security practitioner guide. So as a reminder, these guides are designed for people who are brand new to the topic. So, um, so this is not a big comprehensive, all the things you could possibly know about security. It really is, um, here are the things you need to get started. And here are some, some things you can do within your community to improve the security of your open source project. Um, of course, by measuring things and deciding what to improve on. But I would encourage people to provide feedback on that. So feedback's due September 6th. So I would love to have people's people's feedback on um, just on what you think. And if you have any other, other resources, things that you think would be helpful for people, that would be great. That's it. And just for those who haven't looked at any of the practitioner guides, this does follow kind of a template with the steps. So if you're wondering where those came from, that is standard across all the practitioner guides. So yeah, great work, Don. This is a lot. And I love that you worked on this during the break of meetings when I was literally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had all that focus time, no meetings. I did a lot of sleeping. So yeah, I'm glad you were hard at work. <laughs> um, questions for Don, who has questions? Oh, good. Thanks, Matt. Is that, is that it? Sorry, we're going to jump back a minute. I think this was it. Like before it went into a line survey form? Yeah, I think so. So don't take this question, don't take this, but these are the questions. Yeah, it's a little bit easier to read. Yeah. And I think we chose Lime Survey uh, over Google Forms for a reason. I don't remember what that reason is, but I think we had a reason. Open sourceness? Maybe. Yeah, that's what I remember. Okay, sorry to uh, jump back. Any anybody have questions for Dawn on her practitioner guide? Y'all are having to follow my ADHD train of thought, so thank you, <laughs> thank you for coming on the journey. Sorry, with me. I'm like posting things. Oh, you're fine. You're good. Nice. No, you're good. It's a nice walk in the woods. <laughs> it is. 
it's a long, long and winding one, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, okay, let's go on to the new metrics template work. Yay. I just want to say Peculiar and Yiga are going to be helping out. So that's great. Um, I think the only question, you know, as we take this on, remember, there has to be this spot where the the metric is put into the new template. And then you need to know something, Elizabeth, on the website in order to get that thing to work. Actually, OK, so if they're making the changes in the file that's already being pulled, it mm -hmm. should update automatically. Okay. As that file changes, that should automatically happen to the website. Okay. I know in the past we've had issues with caching, so we might have to tweak our caching a little to make to like force it to re refresh, but it should go automatically. Okay. Um, well, I'll keep you or peculiar and like you can keep you kind of in the loop on that just to make sure, like maybe do a couple and just to yeah. make sure that, that would be great go mm -hmm. all the way through. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So that was kind of the only logistical thing I think we're going to run into because the rest is really just about just using the new headers and maybe a little bit of text editing, but not a whole lot. And for those who haven't seen it, this is the new template, which we're going to apply to the metrics. And it's really making it a lot easier to read instead of a huge wall of text for folks. It's going to be this and then if they want to know more they can click that and it will let us let them know all the other stuff and then i'll also point out val is on this call too val is helping with that reference section hi everyone hi and, val uh, so val i think the order is going to be here so we have the metrics that obviously exist and then Yiga and Peculiar are going to be putting them into this new template. And so for the references, I think the easiest way to track them is just going to be in that spreadsheet that I shared with you. Okay. And then we can go That's ahead. That's what and... I was using to, to put the links for, for the re references. Perfect. Because then after they're done, then we can issue a bunch of pull requests <laughs> against the updated templates to include the references. Just so we're okay. Not doing two things at one time. Although I, I use the um, web page where it shortens the URL because they're so long. That's fine. If you don't mind. Yeah, because it's going to be like so long line of web pages there. Yeah, that's that's totally fine. I mean, even you could even just like provide like a, a reference like in APA style or MPA style with just like you could almost just create a hypertext that says like link to article and then just link it out that way. Okay. Um, so I point, don't worry about putting the references into the live metrics at this point, just keep them on that spreadsheet. And then when you get in peculiar or done, then we can do some pull requests against the metrics to get it into those markdown documents. Okay. And for anybody who's confused, Val is going through research papers and finding ones that support metrics or that inform our metrics to just um, validate them and, and beat them up a little bit. So thank you, Val, for that hard work. We really appreciate that. It's going to make a huge difference for folks trying to use the metrics. So thank you. And this is yeah, I'm doing my best. You know, uh, the the metric the metrics itself. It's when you go into them, I, I have to break them down into several pieces, you know, because there is not such specific metric where I can find on the web articles and so on. So it's a little bit of work, but I'll get I'll get through it through it. No, I, I agree with that. Like you can't just search on the title <laughs> and expect right. To get I'm, I'm trying to break it down into smaller pieces where then uh, when I do the research, I find the the specific appropriate articles that in my point is helping to the context that they do have. Perfect. And I just put in the chat. Oh, go ahead, Don. Your comment. Oh, I was just going to say, you can also have a look at the practitioner guides because I, uh, at least for the metrics that are in the practitioner guides, I do have some sources 
cited there. So that might give you a, a starting point for at least a few of the metrics. And you can see how I did the references at the end of the um, practitioner guides as well. That might. How do I find it? Oh, the practitioner guides. Yeah, I'll, I'll post a link in the chat. Thank you. Okay, Matt, what is the link that you just posted? Um, the spreadsheet, the one. Is that the metric spreadsheet? Oh, yeah. This is where, like, to keep track of the references, I think it'll be easiest here. So that list on the left-hand side, column A, is our full list of metrics that we have. Yeah, I love it. So Valve can just kind of keep the citations here for the time being. Is what I, was saying. I think an added benefit that maybe we didn't count on uh, might be the metrics that don't have any that might be good places for us to maybe think about some research stuff that we want to do yeah data science or the research group yeah so thanks val we appreciate you my pleasure anyone have questions on any of the stuff with the metrics updating changing templates getting references actually we'll just based on what don has in the practitioner guides i think when we issue the whole request to the metrics to add the references we can just use that style that don you started with in the guides yeah i think it's just apa style i think perfect Honestly, I just do that. I copy the APA citation from Google Scholar and it. Oh, sure. And yep. it. Perfect. <laughs> no questions <laughs> asked then. Nice. An APA, I think, is the top one. So you don't even have to like go down where it's the closest <laughs> one. <laughs> God for the alphabet. <laughs> Always go with the, the ones that starts with A. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Anything else on this before we move on? Okay. Let's go on to this. Um, Sean, I did see this right before yeah. I had the meeting, so I merged it. So oh, I don't... sweet. So yeah. now I will uh, test it. <laughs> so I, I, was... tested, I tested it in this other repo, and it works fine. And so the only thing I'd really be testing now after you've merged it is that it works in the new repo. I basically copied everything correctly. So I'll do that while we attend to other items. Okay, I didn't know if you wanted to enlist the help of anybody in testing. Oh, uh, at this point, I'll just open an issue and see if it works okay. um, and then make any tweaks necessary. But, but what it is, is I don't know if you wanna share your screen and just kind of go to open an issue oh, yeah. in the community repo. Let's just test it right now. Um, yeah, oh. so, we'll do it live. and there's a chaos contribution is the, the template and give it a name um facilitate oh facilitated community well diesel pete your keyboard does not want to play well with the uh issue tracker here <laughs> does it area project um what would i put here uh you could put uh meeting facilitation or okay and Did uh um it, oh uh, i think i think meetings are one of them somewhere maybe it's towards the bottom i don't see it uh i'll just put here all right all right so uh, if you go to the actions tab we can see it executing okay did it work? Uh, I'm not sure if it worked actually. So why don't we uh, go on to something else? Let me look at it. Okay. Um, that's not what I was expecting to see. I love a live demo. Thanks, Sean. Sure, no problem. Um, for those who don't know what that is, uh, so we have this um, we have this file here called Community Contributions, and it's meant to keep track of those contributions that do not show up in a PR anywhere. 
Um, so it's things like this, auditing for accessibility, running meetings, things that don't get tracked or counted anywhere. So the idea is that not only are we able to um, keep track of them a little more, we're able to surface them, give them more visibility, celebrate them, really give folks who are contributing these um, in these places something to point to also as like proof, <laughs> proof of their contributions to, to chaos. Um, so it serves a whole lot of purposes. This is not perfect at all. Um, we're just trying to make it easier. So opening an issue is supposed to do this automatically. Right now, it's you have to issue a PR and then it gets added. So um, with Sean's new action, it will do everything automatically behind the scenes. So make it a whole lot easier for folks to self self uh, identify their contributions and to opt into this. So and we'll just tweak uh, we'll as we go. Quick, quick look at it. It, it somewhere it looks like I have to enable this action in the repository so i will be working on that okay do you have you have permissions to do that right yep okay yep. i just figure out how to do it <laughs> okay cool thanks thanks sean so yeah so that's what that's for and again this is not a perfect system it's just meant to just to move us off zero as we like to say in, in um, chaos so it's a start um, okay, let's go on to this next one. Salva is still on here, I think. Yes, there you are. Hello. Um, thanks for uh, allowing me to speak. I would like to say thank you to those of you who showed up at the Cycle DX uh, Sustainability Working Group meeting on Thursday. Um, it was a opening meeting where we talked about vision and what we want to achieve and such. Um, uh, this will probably continue and then go over into uh, creating use cases in the next few uh, meetings. Um, and I would like to tell you guys that you are still quite welcome to uh, continue participating. And uh, I'm sure there's enough to do and we'll have good discussions and uh, we'd love to see you, all of you that uh, uh, would like to join or, uh, and especially those of you who were already joined for a quick little uh, trip into the Cyclone DX uh, world. That's all I wanted to say. It was awesome to see your faces and uh, I hope to see you guys again. Yeah, thanks for having us. Is I, I will say, is there any possible way that the meeting could move an hour earlier or one hour later? It happens to be exactly at a chaos corporate OSPO meeting. And I know yeah. a lot of people like to be at both places. I. I shall bring this to Stephen, uh, and uh, we had quite a bit of a um, puzzle to make yeah, this particular piece to fit into, but uh, yeah. we can see what we can do. And uh, I duly noted, and and uh, please hang out in the um, Cyclone DX uh, OSS sustainability channel uh, if you want to follow up on this. Uh, and if I don't see you out there, I'll see if I can uh, report any updates on this. Uh, okay. And, and in any case, the link that was shared with you guys, the last week's meeting, uh, which is about, um, let's see, says also sustainability use cases and requirements. Um, uh, yeah, that's the one, yeah. Um, I will up uh, will that one will be the one this is the authority one basically so will uh, this is where we will do our work and at the top of the page there will there are links to um, all the necessary stuff and we'll make sure that uh, the correct uh, information is there thank you thank you we'll just mention in the data science working group meeting that we just had right before this um, Callie Dolphy from Red Hat mentioned that it would be really nice to have maybe a podcast on on S bombs and um, kind of the metrics and measuring around that. So um, so maybe we should maybe we should think about doing doing something like that, doing a Chaos Cast podcast episode about something about S bombs because it's it's quite a hot topic and it's it's something that I think would be really interesting on the Chaos Cast. Yeah, so a big community uh, over at um, uh, OpenSSF uh, Slack and uh, Cyclone DX Slack. Uh, uh, 
that care about stuff like this. So, and uh, I don't know if I, I'm the right person to offer my help in this regard, but um, the, if there's somebody who has any uh, vision or idea, then I'm happy to be a sounding board at minimum and we'll see where it goes. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll move on. Thank you for that update. We hope to see you back here regularly. It's good to see you. Uh, let's go on to Sophia and her glue work research project. If she's still on the call, I don't see her. I don't think she is. Oh, oh, it says have to drop early. I just see that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sophia, we would have pushed you up. I didn't even see that next week. Next week. Well, I think I think she just wants people to reach out if you're interested in being interviewed for this for this research. Um, just reach out to her in Slack. I don't, I don't know that we necessarily need to wait a week. Okay, so it looks like all of us are eligible, every single person here, because we're all working on an open source project. So if you like to talk about stuff to people you don't know, then you should get get a hold of Sophia. Uh, we have 10 minutes. Let's just go through our reminders really quick. CFP deadline for LF Member Summit is soon, this Friday, right? Something. Um, so if you have ideas for papers, that would be great. Um, here's the information about it. This is kind of what they're looking for, if you're not sure. Um, it is a little bit different of a conference since they have, you know, kind of a legal track and some other things. Um, for those who have been, would you say it's a higher level, like not super technical talks, or are they pretty technical? Not technical at all. Okay, so very high level stuff. Yeah. I don't find the talks to be technical. Okay, good. I think, I think it's a bit of a, a bit of a mix, but I think that it does tend to be more more managery types than maintainers. Got it. Um, number two is to make sure if you have ideas <clears throat> for the podcast that you would like to hear about or want to talk about, you can email this and it will get to the right people. Um, we may or may not have this form. I don't know if that command works. I still haven't tested that apparently. It does work for some. It doesn't work for others. I don't know why. But this is pinned in the general channel. Um, if, you, if you want the comms team to help you spread the word about something, um, an article you, that had been posted somewhere or something that's going on in your working group that you would like to share with the community, just let us know uh, through that form. You can also nominate somebody for chaotic of the week if you know someone who's doing great work who um, what you would like to celebrate and help us um, just give visibility to their efforts that would be awesome and to recognize them. Um, we also have a. Um, we have a couple of things if you've given a talk about chaos, you can add your slides to the education repo uh, if you've already given it if you haven't given it yet, there is also a calendar of upcoming talks which we have, and you can add yours to that through this form up here, this comms team form. So that kind of serves multiple purposes. Um, and then the last one is this code of conduct documentation that we're working on as a community. They would really love, the team would really love your feedback on these two documents. Um, I know it's ongoing, we mention it every week. We just wanna make sure that everybody has a chance to um, read these, understand them, give feedback, give input, um, um, so they're going to keep it open for a little while longer, but if you haven't done that yet, you should do that because it is a community effort. And we want buy-in from everybody who is interested in participating. Phew. That was a lot. Look at us go. Goodness. What else do we have? We have seven minutes. What the heck? It's always funny when we start, there's like two things on the agenda. And then when we end, there's like... <laughs> 12. <laughs> right? I love that actually, because people feel okay putting stuff on here. Because I can, I can never think of stuff, honestly. I'm like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. Here's what I think, but you know, 
I always look at it, the agenda right before the meeting and think, oh, it's going to be a short meeting. And then it never is. <laughs> right? I don't even know why I think that like I should I should just be more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a short meeting ish, seven minutes short. So, yeah, great to see everybody. I will give you your seven minutes back. I hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you here next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya.